Grace and peace to you. Welcome back to Satiric Prophetic Ministries. Yes, it has been a while. For those of you who have been subscribing or who are subscribers to this podcast, you know that there'll be seasons when I'm on it. I'm I'm diligent. I'm consistent. And then, you know, <laughs> you know, there'll be times where you just won't hear from me. And one thing I will say about that is I'm true to every season that God has ordained for me. When I'm in seasons of industry, you're going to see me planting pulling, harvesting, the whole nine yards. But then when God has me in a season where I'm studying or I'm resetting or resting, then I'm going to obey that season as well. And so you've got to get to a place in your life where you don't apologize for where God has you. And the thing about religion is religion has the tendency to cause pressure. It's a pressure to perform a pressure to be seen or a pressure to be um uh to fit in a certain frame right um but thank god that in the kingdom of god we move by the spirit of god and so there'll be times when god says speak there'll be times when god says be quiet (laughs) there'll be times when god says get some rest and there'll be times when god says get to work so if you go a few days without hearing from me or a few months for that matter. All is well. All is well. We're just being obedient to Holy Spirit. Having said that, the word I want to release to you is concerning blockers. Okay? Season blockers. Life blockers. Destiny. I think I'll stick with that. Destiny blockers. Um, Now, this can happen one of three ways. Either God is blocking you because there's an area you're trying to move into and it's not time. Um, I'll give you King David, right? After Samuel anointed King David, God sent or he led David back to the field. It was not time for David to assume the throne of Israel, even though he had received the calling, even though he had been crowned and anointed. um, It was not time. And so you may find that even though God has spoken a certain thing concerning your life and, 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 you know, God has confirmed it. It doesn't always mean it's time to move into that because for where God has taken you, there may be some work that needs to be done in that space. Another example of that is when God blessed um, Israel. He told them, he said, listen, listen, I'm going to send you to a land flowing with milk and honey. He was talking about the land of Canaan. Now, because Israel's mindset had not been developed, this is for somebody, even though God has said and God has not lied But there's a certain maturity that we've got to own, that we've got to manifest before we can step into that greater dimension, right? Because to whom much is given, much is required. So even though God say, hey, I'm going to I'm giving you a land flowing with milk and honeys, milk and honey, the land that I promised to your forefathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. This is the land of your inheritance. God did not lie about that. Um, Just like some of the promises that God has made you, he has not lied about that. It's just that you may not have reached that point of maturity. And so in that God himself will block it. He will have you in a season where you find yourself in circles. Like you just feel like you just can't get past a certain point. You can't mature past a certain point. You can't grow past a certain point. And it's because there's a work God is doing in you. There's some character work, personality work, spiritual work, deliverance work. God is doing that work in you. And he loves you too much to allow something that he blesses you with to destroy you. The blessings of the Lord maketh rich and he add no sorrow. So because of that, that God himself may block you. Because it's not time, even though, and I wrote a book a few years ago, time and seasons, right? Knowing the difference. So it, um, time and turn. And so, yeah, it may be your time, but it's not your turn. It was David's time to be king, but it wasn't his turn because there were still some things that God was doing in King Saul. So you may have seasons where God is blocking you. You may have seasons where the enemy is blocking it, like he's hindering you. He's throwing all types of um, barriers and, and, and blockages in your way. It can come through people who just are time wasters. My God, have you ever been around people or a person who they have an anointing to waste your time? And you'll feel it after you finish talking to that person or being around that person you will feel a sense of disgust because you know within your knower, I wasted two hours doing that. I wasted an hour with that. You you will feel it. The Holy Spirit of God, because you, the Holy Spirit will be grieved 
because God tells us to redeem the time. And so if you can be comfortable, and I don't know who this is for, but here I come. If you can be comfortable wasting time, then you really need to tune in to whose spirit you're yielded to. Because the thing about the spirit of God and, and the Lord Jesus was the perfect example. He would not allow people to just draw him into anything. People would pulling on him the crowds were thronging him he was invited to go here and go there but he would only do that which the father revealed for him to do because he knew his time was not yet come he knew he was only here for a certain period of time and so when you are mindful and you are cognizant of the blessedness of time that we don't have all day there are certain assignments that God expects you to get done within a certain parameter, within a certain window. And you got to get that done. And so the enemy will use people close to you, strangers, people you used to deal with. I mean, he doesn't discriminate, right? Whosoever will. And these folks will come into your life right when God has ordained a season of industry. Have you noticed? Listen, they will not approach you when you're in a season of rest, right? When you're in a season of rest... You've got time to entertain whatever, but when you're in a season of industry and you see certain people coming at you and they just waste your time, you have to know these are assignments from the enemy to draw you out of your, your, graced, your graceful dimension of time. In other words, the time where God has graced you, empowered you, equipped you, given you resources, people and otherwise to get the work done, but you're, you're handling time wasters. And these folks, listen, they're not on anybody's time, not even their own. God certainly has not assigned them to do anything because they have not proven to him that they have the capacity to honor time. And so these folks, they don't honor God's time. They don't honor their time. They certainly won't honor your time. And so the enemy will use these folks. I call them time wasters. They'll call you with nonsense or they'll come to your house with nonsense or they invite you to something that has absolutely nothing to do with where God has you. And you've got to know that for yourself. You've got to know, shall I pursue, overtake, recover? You need to know when to go, when to stay. Um, and then, but a third blessing blocker or destiny blocker is self-inflicted. It can be self-inflicted where you yourself just won't move. God is telling you to do a certain thing and you just won't do it. A few years ago, the Lord impressed upon me to return to school. Now, if any of you follow me on Facebook, I promise you, I feel like <laughs> I know the brain is a muscle, but man, I'm like, God, do I have to learn this new skill? Do I have to go back to training for that? Do I have to go back to school? Like, I'm just, and I'm an educator, but I, sometimes I get so weary sometimes. I just don't want to read anything. I don't want to study. I don't want to write another paper. I don't want to attend another. Like, I don't want to go to another training. But yet, there, there's that assignment on my life to learn and to teach and to teach and to learn. And so you've got to continue to sharpen those tools, right? And um, so a few years ago, the Lord impressed on my spirit to go back to school to get my school admin degree, um, which is a grad level degree. And I didn't want to do it. I said, God, I just got my doctorate. I've got my undergrad in sociology uh, as a social worker. You know, I've got all these other certifications and trainings. I'm like, I'm really good. I really, I'm happy with my career. I really don't want to do anything different. You know, don't have the time to go to school. I'm not even trying to make that time. And I continue to feel him press upon my spirit to go back to school, get this training, get the certification, get this paper, get this paper. And I did. Um, reluctantly, I'll be honest with you. It was reluctant, but I obeyed, right? Um, lo and behold, not even a year later, doors that I had never, you know how the Bible said, eyes have not seen, ears not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of anything God had prepared for them, but he has revealed them to us by his spirit. So I, I, there were doors. I, I didn't even know it was a door. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes we think we have a handle on what God is doing and you don't for his ways and not our ways, his thoughts, right? Not our ways, our thoughts. And sometimes you think you're doing good. Sometimes you even like where you are. And God is still saying, come up higher, daughter, son, come up higher. I got some greater things to show you. I got some other platforms I want to lift you to. But for some of those platforms, there's a prerequisite. There, There's a thing that you've got to do. For example, with Joseph, even though God said, Joseph, you're going to be the prince of Egypt, son. You're going to rule over Egypt. You're going to rule your people. You're going to save your people, right? However, there's a prerequisite. He needed to understand the, the the principles and the laws that govern Egypt. 
Same thing with Moses. I'm going to raise you up. I'm going to lift you up, son. You called out your, you know, a peculiar child, but I need to teach you. Right. And so God will take you through seasons of training, seasons of intense um, uh, 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 discipleship so that you can own that platform where he's taking you to. Right. So that you'll be able to diligently manifest that apostleship or that pastorship or that um, evangelistship, whatever that thing, whatever the work is, whatever. He wants you to be able to articulate it well, right? And so I went ahead and I did that. And within a year, a door opened for me that I didn't even know was a door. I didn't even know God could do. And listen, when I say that, I know God can do anything. But sometimes there's some things that you don't even have the mind to ask God to do. Like it has not entered. You know what I'm saying? It just hasn't entered into the realm of your understanding that, wow, that's something God can do. But it wasn't until I stepped out. I'm talking about these destiny blockers because sometimes we block ourselves by being lazy, by being shiftless, by being um, crafty. You know what I'm saying? Trying to trying to trying to fake it. And it's not working for you. <laughs> it's just not working. Right. Um, if anything, you're just going to delay yourself and you're going to you're going to hinder yourself um, or you're entertaining time wasters. And so you you have to be mindful of what a destiny blocker can look like for your life and also be mindful of why God is saying to you, I need you to evaluate where you are. I need you to examine if they are. Now, some of you may be doing well, like apostle, woman of God, I'm good. There's nothing in my way. I'm zoom, zoom, zooming. I'm doing what God is telling me to do all as well. And for you, hallelujah, God bless you. Praise Jesus. But then there are others who don't share that testimony and you are stuck and you're frustrated and everything around you is moving by the power of God, right? But you're not. So then what's happening? Is God blocking you? Are there some areas in your life where God is saying, hey, I need you to, I'm, I'm, I'm about to prune you. <laughs> I'm about to cut you, right? And, 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 and pull you back from some things. Or he may say, you know what? I need to correct you in this area. Or he may say, you know what? I need to grow you and develop you in this area. Or he may say, I need you to go through this test again because you didn't quite come out with the skill set that I was expecting. So yeah, I need you to go back. <laughs> I need you to go back around that, around that bin one more time. Then again, it may be self-inflicted. It's something that God is telling you to do and you just don't want to do it. Like me, I did not want to do it, but I did it. And to God be the glory, a door open, a great effectual door, like Apostle Paul said. And I'm I'm happier now. And I don't like to use the word happy because that's not fruit of the spirit. That's a condition. But I'm I'm happier now that I've ever been in my career. Is, is it more work? Yes. To whom much is given, much is required. But it speaks more to my destiny than anything I've ever done. And I know that what I've done to this point has only prepared me for this work. But I had to I I I, I had to acknowledge that had I not have obeyed God and 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 committed to what he was requiring me to do, I would have become a destiny blocker. My, it would have been a self-inflicted destiny block. And you can't blame the enemy for that. You can't blame the witches or the warlocks or whoever is battling you in the realm of the spirit. You have to own that and say, you know what, God, it's me. I'm the delay. I am the reason that this is not happening for me. Um, and so I feel like that's what God is saying to you. I feel like he wants you to come to a place um, where you own where you are. Like I said, many of you may be flowing in God and you're, you're moving and man, God is doing some tremendous things in you, with you, for you and to you. And that's amazing. Um, but then others, you know, that, you know, that maybe not so much. Um, and, and the Lord is saying, hey, I, I, I need you to pull aside now and and let's have this conversation. Right. God expects every promise in your life to come to pass, regardless of how lofty it may seem, how far stretched, how far fetched, outstretched it does. God, when God speaks, he, he expects his word to come to pass. He said he watches over his word and he will even hasten it to perform it. So God expects that, but he's not going to violate your will. He's not going to fight you now. He's not going to fight you to bless you. So you have to get into alignment with what he's saying. But there are some things that God has authorized for you to operate in. There's some doors that God has authorized to be open for you. But you've got to posture yourself. You've got to get in that place uh, to where that's happening for you. OK, um, but he wants to complete every um, promise. He wants to bring it to pass concerning your life. He wants to straighten out crooked paths. Some of the crooked paths have nothing to do with our footsteps. 
Listen, some of the crooked paths have a lot to do with our mindset. Some of our minds are crooked. And I don't mean like you like you got criminal tendencies. I'm not talking about that. I mean crooked in the sense you're not able to think straight. You're not able to process. You're not able to reason. You're not able to evaluate or examine. Like there is something. Trauma can do that to you. Pain, unforgiveness, all of that can cause you to have a dysfunctional um, process of, of thought to where you're thinking. They call it stinking thinking, right? And so even that can be a place of a crooked path. You can have a crooked path in your mind. The way you process, the way you perceive is crooked. And so God is saying, look, I'm going to make that path straight. I'm going to straighten you out. I'm going to straighten out the way you think. I'm going to straighten out the way you process. I'm going to straighten out the way that you handle things. And, and trust me, that's a work. When God starts to deal with your mind, that's a work. So you can say amen, but you better get ready for, for that work. It's, it, ooh, it's going to be an undertaking, I'm telling you. Um, but God wants you to claim everything, everything. God, everything that you said belongs to me. God, I claim it. I may not even be in a position right now to receive it. But God, I claim it. I, I come into agreement with your word concerning me. Clear, Lord God, and straighten every crooked path in my mind, in my heart, and the way that I process. God, complete every incomplete assignment. Give me the grace and the ability and the stamina to stay the course. I'm hearing God say some of you don't have the stamina to stay the course. You stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. And if you've ever known anybody just like, first of all, if you've ever driven on a highway, you would like you would just totally destroy your gas mileage. <laughs> you know, the best gas mileage is for those of you that are on the highway and you just, you know, you stay in the course, you stay in that momentum. But when you in that stop and go traffic, it destroys your gas mileage. Right. Um. So he wants you to have momentum and he wants you to be consistent. So begin to claim what God has for you and come into agreement. But then also prepare for the work that um, that he's going to do with you and through you to get you where he needs you to be. Right. He's saying to you, don't forget the things that I've taught you. And he wants you to keep his word in your heart. Keep your word. Hi, David said, your word I have hidden in my heart, right? He wants you to trust him with all of your heart, despite what you see. Some of you all are seeing some walls and you feel like the walls are closing in on you. And God said, I need you to see me beyond the walls. I need you to see me beyond the, the barriers and the limitations, right? Um, and God wants you to be confident. He wants you to have a confidence in him. He's the same God that for all the prayers you pray that were according to his will, all the times you needed deliverance, deliverance, all the times you needed to be healed, all the times you needed to be set free. And he did that. He said, I'm the same God. I need you to restore your confidence in me. He said, because if I began a good work in you, he said, I'm going to perform it until the day of Christ. God's going to do that. He's faithful to his word. And so, you know, the blessings of the Lord are about to overtake you. But people of God, you got to get in place and stay in place, right? And start to look at these destiny blockers. Rather, it's an area where God himself said, hey, not yet. I'm going to do it, but not right now. Look at if it's you. If you're not moving and God said, hey, I've, I've ordered your steps. Now I need your feet to move. Or is, you know, are there some demonic things happening then? You know, to cast those things down and do battle in the realm of the spirit, right? Um, so we want you to be blessed by the word of the Lord. I'm um, just talking about destiny blockers and getting into that place where God can um, get some fruit. God wants to harvest from our lives. We often talk about sowing and harvesting, but God wants to harvest from us as well. Right. He's sown in us. God knows he's constantly sowing into me. And, and so what he gives us, he also expects a return. Amen. All right. Until the next appointed time, may the Lord be with you, watch you, keep you and bless you is my prayer in Jesus name. God bless.